those viewers, you are the reason I love doing this television show. And one of our segments, back in the game, was one of our most popular. You were with me every step of my journey with online dating, dating, going through a divorce, re-entering the dating world. You were there for everything. And what really helped me cope through everything was your support, your emails, knowing that we were in this together. The point of being back in the game is to eventually get out of the game, find your person. And I found my person, so I'm going to be out of the game, but I'm not going to completely abandon you. I'm going to answer your questions tonight as my last segment of Back in the Game for Out of the Game with the fabulous Valerie, who is my assistant in everything in the world. You are my key person on the television show, booking our guest, and you have been with me every step of the way. So what better person to ask the questions that the viewer sent in? Yes, we have been together through this whole we, experience. We yes, have been have. together, yes. and it's been an experience. Yes, and it's a still wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Wonderful experience. Yes, so I'm going to have you ask some of our viewer questions and how exciting that they you picked and selected the best of the best questions. There were yes. so many. I'm sure it was hard for you to narrow these down, but you try to do uh, a variety of questions and I'm game to answer them all. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's Are you ready? Let's get I'm started. I'm so ready. Okay. okay. All right. So our first one is from Melvin Rollins. It says, Deborah, I have followed your dating life extensively for 18 months and would have stalked you in a fun way if I could have. So what was the final moment that made you select the gentleman that you are currently dating? So I'm going to say the stalking might make me a little yes, fearful, that's but that's okay. You said in a fun way, right? In a fun way. Okay. In a fun way. Yes. So I think there's not a moment that uh, I selected John. I think there were many moments. I dated for 18 months and it was fun and adventurous and met some really great guys, as you know, some amazing yes. guys. Um, John was just different. I felt very comfortable with him on date number one and involved into a great friendship. I was super attracted to him, which I think is very important. But also we had a lot of commonalities. We had a lot of things in common. Um, family. Uh, he was religious. He, you know, liked adventure. He was very positive. He is very positive. He loves to travel. I love to travel. Um, so there's so many things that brought us together. And, but I think there was not one moment. There were many moments. And I think that all of those moments really led me to believe that he, you know, was my person and that we would have a great adventure in life together. So in answer to the question, not one moment, many moments, um, I knew there was something special about him, but there's, there was something special about many people out there, right. but it's, if you can work together and you have fun together and you see a future together and you really want to take life on um, on this adventure. Do you agree? Well, I'll have to say <laughs> that I saw you go on several first dates, mm -hmm. and you were so excited the first time that you went out with John. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think that that would be a good indicator is yes. that you just get those butterflies. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew you had the butterflies because you were just so Excited giddy. after was that giddy. Day. You were giddy like a schoolgirl. Right. Yes. And you were with me when I was dating one guy for six months right. and one guy for exactly. five months. And I didn't have those butterflies. Right, exactly. But in date but number one, you're exactly right. Right, you were excited. Very so you're exactly. Yeah. So great, yeah. great question. Yeah. So the next one is from Kimberly Jonas. Deborah, dating is the biggest challenge of my existence, which I know a lot of women feel that way. Mm -hmm. You seem to have figured it out. How do you get to that point? Please help. So I haven't figured anything out. I love that's a great question because you figure it out as you go. The one thing I do think that was on my side was I was confident in that whatever happened, happened. There was no moment that really I thought I would meet anyone. I thought I would just really have fun. Um, and my expectations were high in what I wanted in a person. I wasn't going to settle. 
um, because life is way too short. And I think that you just have to not give up. I think there are lots of times that you have moments and you have dates and you have relationships and you have to go in that moment because you just really don't know what's going to happen. So I, I don't think I figured out anything. I just think I was positive. I went with the system. I wasn't, my expectations were high. However, I wasn't willing to settle for a relationship that I wasn't completely into or knew that, you know, we work together. So I think, you know, there's the 80-20 rule. Everyone's not perfect, but you have to hit 80% of the checks for me. And so for that person, I would say, keep trying. You know, there's, right. I have not figured it out. You haven't figured it out, but you'll meet the person and then you'll figure it out together. That's right. And that's something that I, when I read the question, that is what came to my mind immediately. Mm -hmm. And you said it two or three times is right. that you did not settle. Mm -hmm. And so it's really not about figuring it out. It's right. about just not settling for what isn't, doesn't make you happy. Right. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The next one is from Cindy Evans. Deborah, what is your biggest challenge in your current relationship? So that's a great question, Cindy. I think that is a great question. There's always challenges. They're not just one challenge. There's right. many challenges. I would say we have a distance challenge where he lives in a city that's an hour and 45 minutes away and I live in Charlotte. We both have super active lifestyles. So it works for us at the moment. Um, the challenge is also um, the same challenge with the distance. Like if there's a party that I want him to attend with me or something, you know, spur of the moment, he's not gonna be available because he lives in a different city. Those are challenges that aren't really challenges though. So I would say, you know, when you hit big challenges in life is when, you know, you you decide uh, how to really dig in and make it work. You know, we've had a few big challenges and we have had an open line of communication. We really, I think that's the most important thing with, with challenges is talking it out and not judging each other and feeling very safe. I think it's very important in a relationship that you feel very safe. Like I can share uh, my views, my concerns, he can share his views, his concerns, and we both feel safe uh, with each other. So I would say those challenges sometimes can be opportunities and you just have to communicate. But great question, Cindy. And then the second part of her question is, has your family accepted your new love? So I think at this age in our lives, we don't have small children. Mm -hmm. We have grandchildren. He has 10 grandchildren. I have three granddaughters. Um, wow, those are big families. Those are big families, yes. yes. <laughs> However, we don't have small children. Mm -hmm. So I think both sides of our family just wants us to be happy. My kids, they're always about if you're happy, we're happy. Of course they want my relationship person to treat me great, put me on a pedestal, make me happy, complete me. You know, as long as all of those things come into place, they're happy. And the same with his family. They mm -hmm. want him to be happy. So I think we're at a good point in our life where we don't have small children and all of those things that pull you apart. So, you know, that's a fair question. But really for us, we're at different points in our lives. And so we don't have all of that baggage. Right. Different kinds of baggage. Right. Just not small children baggage. So they have accepted um, him as part of my life. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next question is from Lady Reed, and it sort of um, coincides with this. So, Deborah, do you still have a good relationship with your ex husband? What great questions. These, yes, you just I know. These the are best amazing questions. questions. These are amazing, yes. real life questions. Um, I would say I do have a good relationship with my ex. Um, we have two great children together and three grandchildren together. Um, we really uh, are great at holidays and special occasions that we can get together and be very amicable. I think with any relationship challenges or any separation, divorce, you know, there's always one party that's a little more bitter than the other party. And I don't think we have that. I think we're happy for each other. Um, are there challenges at times? Absolutely. But I choose to remember the good times and think we had two great children together. Right, two so great important. Great children together. Yes. And at one time we had a great marriage. Mm -hmm. So I choose to remember those moments, and he's happy that I've moved on. Um, and so for that, I'm grateful. So we have a very amicable relationship. Not great, but amicable. So 
that's a great, you know, that's the best I can do. Right, exactly. That's all you can, I, all you can hope for. Right. Yes, yes. So the next one is from Jack Phillips. And it says, Deborah, would you ever consider having an open relationship with your boyfriend? Of course it's from a guy. Yes, Jack, absolutely. Jack. Absolutely. Um, I guess you also want to know about a threesome. <laughs> It's a guy thing. I knew this one was <laughs> from a guy when I read it. But Open yes. relationship. <laughs> okay. So the short answer to that would be never. Um, I'm not an open relationship kind of girl. However, there are people out there, and if that's their journey, then that's their journey, not my journey. I'm not an only child, but I think I feel like I'm an only child, so I don't share well. So, <laughs> no, I absolutely would not be able to share <laughs> In anything with a relationship, I think it's sacred. I think it's you know very intimate. I think it's between two people, and so the short answer would be absolutely never, ever, ever. <laughs> what about you? What? Throw that oh, back absolutely to you. not. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, I am an only child, so right. <laughs> I I totally get that. What you're right. um, mm-hmm. where you're coming from? No, right. absolutely not. I think I'm a little too jealous. Mm-hmm. I would be just super jealous. Right, so, exactly. Absolutely not. Exactly. Yes. So we're both on the same yes. page there. Yes. Absolutely not. <laughs> good question, though, Jack, and good try. Yes. Jack's uh, not the stalker, right? No, 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 okay. no, no. That was the first one. Okay. That was the first one. All right. So the next one <laughs> is from Jessica Brown, and she says, Deborah, what is your love language? That's a good question. That is a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, so my love language is definitely random acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. So I love when um, he does something really special and remembers, like he came into town this weekend and I like these like beef sticks called chomps and he had gone to Costco and purchased some things for, you know, his house and he bought me two bags of chomps. One that was so sweet, Aww, you know, that is so sweet. so sweet and so thoughtful because, you know, that's a wonderful act of kindness that he remembered what I liked mm-hmm. and, you know, it's not a big extravagant gift. It's a thoughtful gift. So I love that, and I do love the touch. Like, I love to hold hands, and I love to cuddle, and I love, you know, the Philly touchy PDA stuff. He not so much, so we're working on that because I love it. He's not a big PDA person, so we're finding commonality with that. So I have two love languages. So definitely acts of kindness are my number, is my number one. And then the second part of her question, and and we kind of had some um, conversation off camera about this Mm -hmm. because I had never heard of this, but she asked, what is your attachment style? So I feel like I have two attachment styles. I'm definitely secure. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel in a relationship, like if you're secure, you're not really concerned about the relationship that you know that it's going to work and you like think the best but then if your partner is a different style whether they're anxious or um abandonment or you know they don't confront the issues they kind of run away from the issues then that brings out a different side so i would say secure for sure but i can have anxious anxious tendencies Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I can't have because it's a trigger, like it's a trigger. And I think for me, it's probably a trigger from my past marriage. Um, So I would say 80% would be secure, 20% would be anxious. So what is yours? So when we talked about Mm -hmm. this, I think I probably am more on on the anxious Mm -hmm. style. And again, I had never heard of this, um, but I think I'm more anxious, that I I get nervous when somebody doesn't call me back, and and not only from a love relationship, from just any relationship. So I think it's anxious. And it does go back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. It goes back, everything in life goes back to your childhood. Yeah. And it's like, it could have been that you had great parents, or Uh it could have been you had challenging parents that didn't give you the attention. But whatever it was, it was your cry for attention when you were young, Mm -hmm. and it feeds into your love style and your attachment style as you develop in life. Some people have it in all relationships, friendship, work, love. Some people just have it in their love relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so it's really important, I think, to know your love language, 
and to know your attachment style. Right. Because if you, and you need to share that with your partner. Right. Because they can help you. And anxious does not work well with an anxious because right. if two people are super jealous of each other and two people are insecure, it's not going to mm -hmm. work because you're not going to trust each other. If you have a right. secure person that's with an anxious, then they almost call each other. Compliment each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting. Right. Definitely something I want to do more research on mm -hmm. is the attachment styles, right. for it. sure. And that was a great question. Who was our Yeah, team? so that was Jessica Brown. Jessica, that was a very awesome Jessica, question. that was an amazing question. Yes. Like an amazing question. So I have one last question last for question. you, Miss right. mm -hmm. Deborah, um, from Ken Long. And it's, how did you know that your current relationship was going to be your last? So I love my guys out there. That I know. Like Ken Long. Ken. Yeah, Ken hey, Long. Ken. I know. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, do we ever know? I mean, we go into any relationship when you get married. You think it's going to last forever. You go into a relationship, and it's been a year plus some months here, and you hope and pray that it's going to last forever. So I think for me, we both are invested. We're committed. We know that we hit the jackpot found, finding each other, you know, because we have the 80-20 rule. Yes, you did. And we have so much fun with each mm -hmm. other. And, you know, we have, a, you know, we just have fun together, which I think is, you know, 80% of the crapshoot, you know. So, I mean, forever, you just have to, you have to go day by day. And I feel like he's my forever, forever person. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you, you know, say that, you get these questions, like, you, I mean, no one really knows that. You just have to play it day by day. I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow. I mean, that's the one thing that you right. don't know. No one knows what tomorrow is going to bring. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do I have hope? Absolutely. Do I think he's the one? Absolutely. That's why I'm out of the game, you know. However, that's like such an open-ended question because, you know, you really don't know. I mean, you really don't. Right. But, but I have high hopes for it. What do you think? No, I think that's it. That's absolutely right. So mm -hmm. how do you know it's your last? Mm -hmm. You know, you can go into it feeling like this is my last. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you said, you never know what tomorrow brings. And so mm -hmm. I think that, but going, having every day knowing that, hey, this feels good to me. I didn't settle for anything. Mm -hmm. This relationship makes me absolutely happy. Right. Um, like you said, you have fun together. This is my best friend. Right. And that's how that's how I knew that that was my last relationship. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And so. this is what I tell people. I'm like, well, you know what? I saved the best to last. That's right. You because saved the best I for last. I saved the best for last because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel like it. it is my last relationship. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Those viewer questions were amazing. I know. Amazing. So always, amazing. I love them. I'm going to give kudos to you. Shout out to you. Find the best guest. And I know you went through so many questions to find the best of the best questions. So thank you. And you. thank you to the viewers yes. for turning them in and being so interested in, mm -hmm. in all of Good this. Journey. And I hate that the segment is ending. <laughs> but... But I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Yes. So I just want to say, follow your dreams. I love that you, my wonderful viewers, have been here with me every step of the way. And I want to be every step of the way with you. So if there's anything that we can do to make your path a little brighter, to make your journey a little easier, we are here for you. Thank you for making back in the game one of the most popular segments we've ever had and thank you for believing in me and allowing me to get out of the game to view this entire episode or to view other past episodes please visit our podcast site at deborahkennedyshow.com you can view the complete episodes right on the website or subscribe to the show via itunes or your favorite podcatcher thanks for watching Tonight I have a very special guest, Todd Verkan, with Care Patrol, talking about what it's like to experience when the kids become the parents. We, at some point in life, will all experience that. And you help with your company navigating that tool. And lots of times, you know, it's really just starting with assisted living because the parents are at a certain age that, you know, they, they maybe perhaps want to go to assisted living to be around 
other friends or you know people their age maybe their spouse died so that's one level that's a good level that we start with correct Todd that is correct um, a lot of times when an individual is not ready or is unable to take care of themselves at home anymore they're no longer safe at home and they need the socialization and somebody that's always in the in the community 24 7 to to watch out for them Right, and you know, that's a really fine balance, I think, to having a parent decide that they want to do the assisted living, because oftentimes they don't, because they feel like they're giving up their independence and their freedom, and they are, but they also need to be in a safe environment, correct? Correct. None of our seniors really ever say, hey, I'm looking super forward to going to assisted living. Right. It's one of the choices that the family, it's a family decision that helps, you know, advise the family member that, hey, you're no longer safe at home, we're worried about you, we're concerned. Here's a better opportunity for mm -hmm. you to socialize, get three great meals a day, and live more comfortably. Right, and I think too, Todd, I'm not familiar with it, um, but I think there's all these different levels too of assisted living where, you know, perhaps some people have the means mm -hmm. to pick whatever assisted living they would like to go in. They can go into one that is spectacular, almost like a, a Trump Tower. <laughs> Or there's ones that, you know, perhaps have no money and have to go into state assisted living, correct? Correct. And so how do you, like, is there a fine balance? You know, tell me the ins and outs of that. So when we talk with a family member, and it's usually the son or daughter that we're speaking with, we want to understand what's going on with mom and dad. What, what are their level of cares? What, what are their needs? What is the location they desire? Ultimately, too, is what is their budget? And we help guide the family. Um, and narrow down searches for a, the best fit for that family based on level of care, location, budget, and desires in a community. Right. And I would say too, a big, big fit would be going to the different assisted livings to see, you know, which one the parent fit in better. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's great to get them in assisted living, but you want them, you know, it's, it's something they probably, more than likely, they don't want to go to. But if they find they like it, you know, that's an added bonus, correct? Absolutely. So finding the right one's important, correct? And we encourage mom and dad coming along for the tour because mm -hmm. this is their next stage in life, their next their next home. And it's important for them to realize that this isn't a nursing home. Right. It's an assisted living community, and it's so different. Our seniors think back to when mom, their mom and dad were in a, in a, a, a facility, and it, it, was, it was a nursing home. Right. Today there's different components mm -hmm. of assisted living, memory care even independent living options. So what are some words of advice, we're gonna go into the different levels too, but what are some words of advice that you can give our viewers out there that are going through this at the very moment? They're at a wit's end, they don't really know what to do, of course, we have your information to reach out to you, of course. Um, so what are, just give me three tips that you would give our viewers. As they're going through that process, the first thing is just be prepared, this is natural and normal, for a senior that as they age, they begin to fall, they have cognitive issues. It's difficult for that family member to accept the fact that, hey, I've got to do something to, to place mom into a, a safer environment. Mm -hmm. So it's really tough for them. Understand mom and dad's budget, you know, their finances, what are their assets, um, because that's a huge um, portion of what's required for assisted living, because it is all private pay. Um, and the next thing is having documents and everything in place, the power of attorneys, wills, um, those are all the other things that are necessary that as we move through the process, uh, make it smoother for uh, the transition. I'm going to say that is an excellent point because I'm going to say personally, even for myself, it's a very difficult and challenging conversation to have with a parent because you don't want the parent to think that any that you're challenging their funding or want their funding you're really not you're really in your mind thinking how much money do they have to sustain this type of exactly. living and then what happens if they have to go to the next level and the next level you know because at some point you're going to have to kick in so it is a, i would say it's a challenging conversation it's very challenging and most people don't want to open up about that but it's important to know what mom and dad's financial positions are because you do want to make the best decision for them. You want their money to last as long as possible. If you choose a nice fancy community that is you know, significantly higher, those funds are gonna run out quicker. Exactly. So maybe less fancy is better 
And not everybody likes that big fancy community. Right. They feel more at home in a different, uh, cozier atmosphere. Because Todd, realistically, you might start in assisted living, but then have to advance very quickly to memory care, or exactly. There's so many yes. different levels of it, correct? There's, there there's, is. It, um, mm -hmm. You know, some individuals stay at home until they reach the point that uh, they're cognitively have declined through Alzheimer's or dementia, um, and are no longer safe at home where they're a wander risk and need a memory care unit that's secure. Mm -hmm. So mom and dad don't wander off and get lost, get hurt. Right. Um, but yes, there's assisted living, there's memory care, um, and ultimately skilled nursing at some point if it gets to the point where it's a medical necessity. Well, we appreciate you coming on the set tonight, and I know you told a great story where your wife was involved in Care Patrol, and yes. when you moved here, you, the franchise was available, and you really wanted to do this to give back to the community and really advise those people, because it is a very, very challenging point in life when we have to make those choices and having someone that that has been through it and knows how to navigate it and makes you feel comfortable with what you're doing for both parties is so important so just give me just like if one line a word of advice for our viewers out there that you gave the tips but one thing that can make them feel good about what they're doing in a resolution so just realize this is part of life we all age um, have those conversations with mom and dad early on, understand what their desires and wants are, and just be prepared for worst case scenarios. Hopefully it's not necessary and mom and dad can stay in their home right. alone, safe forever, right. but be prepared for those situations that arise that they need a little extra help. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, it's so my pleasure. What an amazing guest tonight because at some point you already have or will experience that. And it's uncomfortable to have that conversation with your loved ones, your parents. But as Todd said, you need to know the funding. You need to know their wishes more importantly. So what happens if they something happens and you haven't talked to them about it and then you have to make all the decisions. So it's really be aware, have the communication and have someone that you trust guide you and navigate through the most difficult time of your parents life but then probably the happiest when you look around see the tears fall